better today and welcome to the Leadership Advantage podcast by Dr. John Kenworthy. The Leadership Advantage isn't some magic pill or silver bullet to instant success as a leader, but I'm sharing the art and neuroscience of hacking expert leadership to unstuck your potential in life and work. Hey there, this is John. Welcome to this week's edition of the Leadership Advantage podcast. Changing things around a little bit, I've been talking for the past four or five episodes about influence and how we influence others. And this week, I thought I'd talk about stress and worry and leaving a legacy. Or is it a chasing after the wind? So let's talk about stress. Do you suffer stress? Do you have any problems about stress? Of course you do. Of course you do. How much of your stress is caused by others and how much do you cause yourself? See, when you really think on this, you're going to uncover some rather painful truths about stress. Most of your stress is caused by yourself. Like you, I, I like to place demands on my own performance. Far greater demands than I would ever allow anybody else to place on me. Well, uh, okay, perhaps my wife would debate that, but I don't demand so much from other people. And like you, I have a desire to leave something of a legacy. I want to achieve something bigger than myself, something important. Even though we all know that whether you achieve in this life, you only get one sentence when you die. Lying in a high-ceilinged waiting space, strapped to a bed with wires attached to my chest, head and arms, a drip in my vein, a pressure cuff around my arm. The room was painted white and reminded me of a clean warehouse or a big garage. My mind whirs into action and I continue my deep dive into the abyss of panic. Not about death and the hereafter. No, I know for sure that I'm heaven bound and not just because the Bible tells me so, but because just one year prior to this, I had spent an all too brief four minutes and 33 seconds in the valley of the shadow of death. This time, I tell myself, if I go, I'm staying. But hang on a moment. What about my workshop participants? Ah. See, I'd finished day one of a three-day workshop and they don't even know that I might not be there in the morning and I have no way of contacting them. They would all face that awful Bangkok morning rush hour traffic to get in and have wasted their time to come and find no one there to lead their workshop. And I have never ever not run a workshop, never ever taken a sick day, not in 28 years have I failed to deliver, not once, until now. And what about that workshop next week? I'd spent 12 years fighting for a chance to serve this particular company and next week was the first chance they'd given me seal this one and I'll be set for the next five or ten years. My colleague and business partner who could take over this current workshop was actually in the US on holiday. In the Rocky Mountains, walking on holiday. I'm not even sure he'll be in cellular range, let alone Wi-Fi. Oh Lord, I have no Wi-Fi. 
I have no roaming and I have no Wi-Fi. Nurse, nurse, please nurse, I need Wi-Fi. If only I can get Wi-Fi, I can take control again, inform people, get in front of this. I've just been told that I had congestive heart failure. I was struggling to breathe with all the water trapped in my lungs and I was fretting about letting my workshop participants down, letting my new client down, letting my business colleague down, letting my wife down for not leaving her with a regular income stream and there was going to be no chance of leaving a legacy if I leave this earth tonight. I had allowed myself to get overwhelmed by all these things going on in striving to leave a legacy and do something important. And the one thing that mattered right now was I had no Wi-Fi. Now that's when Solomon's wisdom came to mind. Talk about chasing after the wind. I'm chasing after Wi-Fi. I did get a message to my holiday and business colleague. I got a message to the HR coordinator for the workshop. I got a message to another trainer who was going to be assisting me on the workshop next week to arrange for him to take over. And at 7.15 a.m. my wife received a stream of WhatsApp messages as she turned her phone on and reading through the varying stages of my panic cheerfully reassuring her that I was alive still at that point anyway. I fretted and worried to make sure as much as possible was covered and I wouldn't let anyone down as that I was being forced to do so. And why? Why? When was I going to realise that I am simply not smart enough to run my own life? let alone build this business and ministry into something that, in all humility, is a worthwhile legacy. By 8am, I'd given up trying to sort anything else out. I was exhausted. The blood tests confirmed that I had enjoyed another heart attack, thankfully milder than my first one a year prior, or at least having quit smoking and become a little fitter, I was more likely to recover quickly. I'd peed out a ton of water from my lungs and could breathe more easily. But there was no chance of getting back to the hotel and running the workshop. I was to stay in bed and wait for the specialists and more tests. And to rest. Rest. And sleep. And try not to worry. I surrendered at last to God's tender care. I'd been so willing and easy to trust the nurses and doctors I didn't know, even if they couldn't speak English. But I had stubbornly held on to the notion that I could control any part of my life or my business. Ah, trusting God. So often this is a last resort. Well, there's nothing more I can do. All I can do now is trust God. When you read Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, it does not say with a little bit of your heart, nor does it say rely on some of your own insight and understanding. It says lean on, trust in and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. So I let go. It took me one fatal and one near fatal heart attack to learn this lesson. And yet it's been there for centuries for anyone to read and receive its simple wisdom. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, Everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. I've been much better since. Much better. 
Of course, I still worry, and then I catch myself and remember staring at that whitewashed concrete ceiling and the clock on the wall fretting and planning, and I remember to pray and to let go. I cast all my cares, and peace fills my heart. So, what's the action for you from this? Well, it's probably the most difficult thing I've ever asked anybody to do to be a better leader in their life and work, to unstuck their own potential. Because I know you want to leave a legacy, but to leave a legacy, let go. You're not in charge anyway. Be greatly blessed and highly favoured and enjoy a fabulous week ahead. I hope that you really enjoyed this episode and will share some highlights with the people you care about most. My team and I are working on a series of exciting new projects in this art and neuroscience of hacking expert leadership to unstuck your true potential in life and work. To learn more, visit leadershipadvantage.com or just search for Dr. John Kenworthy and connect with me.